Welcome to this video which introduces the discrete time delta function and step functions. Um, these functions are used a lot in analysis. Uh, they're used quite often in deriving very useful results. Uh, they're also, compared to their continuous time counterparts, much easier to understand and to work with. Uh, unlike the continuous time delta function, which isn't really a function, the discrete time delta function is a function. So um, we have here a graph of a discrete time delta function. You'll oftentimes see this written as delta of n, which indicates that it is a function of n. Here we'll get a color you can actually see here. It's a function of n, and this is then the magnitude of the function. And um, the idea is that delta of n is equal to 1 when n is 0, and it's equal to 0 when n is not equal to 0. So you can see here that we have a, a value of 1 when n is equal to 0, and we have values of 0 for everything else. Okay, so um, this has several different names. Uh, sometimes you'll see the discrete time delta function called a discrete time delta function. Other times you'll see it called a Kronecker delta. Uh, sometimes you'll see it called an impulse or a discrete time impulse or a unit impulse. Uh, sometimes you'll see it called the unit sample function. And this name requires some explanation and it al also allows us to introduce something that at first glance probably looks uh, both complicated and silly, but turns out to be very useful later on when you start looking at how uh, linear time invariant systems respond to delta functions and so on. So the unit sample name uh, is um, given because the following is true. If I have some uh, function, a discrete time function, which I can call x of n, so uh, I might graph it, and for n equals 0, it might have a value, and then n is equal to 1, it has a value, and so on. This graph actually looks like Dr. Seuss has drawn it. So anyway, I have, um, as a function of n, I have these values of x of n. And it turns out that I can write x of n in a very complicated way that includes x of n. And I'll explain why this might be useful in just a minute. x of n is equal to the summation from k, where k is another integer, going from minus infinity to infinity, of x of k delta of n minus k. Okay, and so you'll notice that we still have our function x. Uh, we've replaced the n's by k's, and I'll explain in just a sec what we mean by that. But this really is just a very complicated way of writing x of n in terms of itself using the delta function, which in this case is performing a sampling role. And the meaning behind this is the following. If we have a discrete time signal x, um, I can call the index um, n. I can also call it k. I can call it pretty much anything I want. So if I call this k and call this x of k, I haven't changed the actual values. I haven't changed the assignment uh, from, say, k equals 1 to a particular value. Uh, it's the same as when n equals 1, I still get that same value. But the idea is I can actually have this index variable be whatever I want it to be. And then I also have this delta function here. And the way this delta function works is it will be 0 when n minus k is equal to 0, or in other words, when k is equal to n. And it'll be Whoops, got that wrong. Got that exactly opposite of where I wanted to be. 
Okay, let's try this again. It will be 1 when n minus k is 0, and it'll be 0 otherwise. So basically what I'm doing is each term in the summation, I take um, the value of k. If it's equal to n, then I take 1 and multiply it by x of k. And you can see that that term itself, when k is equal to n, this will be x of n times 1, which is x of n. Whenever k is not equal to n, this term is 0, so I'm adding something in my summation that's 0. So hopefully you, you see that mathematically this is true, if, um, if a little strange, but it's true. And the idea is that I will use this sort of representation for x when I'm trying to find the output of a linear time invariant system uh, when its input is x. So this is why it's called the unit sample function. Another way of thinking about it is my delta function here samples this x of k for a particular value. It basically pulls out the value when uh, it pulls out the value x of n. Okay, so that's a brief introduction to the uh, delta function. Uh, the unit step function looks like this, and typically you'll see it written as u of n where, again, this axis is n, this axis is u of n. And the idea is that u of n is equal to 1 when n is greater than or equal to 0, and it's equal to 0 when n is less than 0. So for values of n out here, u of n is 1, and as n goes on to infinity, it will stay 1. For values of n that are less than 0, u of n is 0, and it will be 0 for n out to minus infinity. Uh, the unit step function is very handy. Quite often, you want to characterize a system, and one way to do that is to see how it responds to a unit step function. So one last useful and interesting tidbit, which hopefully will uh, begin to get you thinking in uh, the way that you need to think in order for a lot of these things to make sense is the following. I can write the unit step function u of n in terms of the uh, unit impulse or the delta function or the Kronecker delta as the summation uh, k going from minus infinity to n delta of k. Okay, and so in order to understand this one, it's probably useful if we actually graph the delta function. So when k is equal to 0, um, my delta function is 0. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on out to positive infinity, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and so on out to negative infinity. So let's look at the case, for example, when n is equal to minus 2. What the summation is going to do is start out at minus infinity, so it'll start summing values of delta out here past, way past the edge of uh, the screen. Uh, infinitely far past the edge of the screen. And it will sum each of these values, so it'll get to minus uh, delta of minus 3 and delta of minus 2, and because n is the upper limit, it'll stop there. And so it will have summed things that are 0. So from minus infinity up to negative 2, these delta of k's will have been 0. So when n is minus 2, you can see that you or that the summation, which I've written as u of n, is zero, and this will be true f when n is any negative number. For the case where n is equal to zero, then here I basically am summing from minus infinity up to zero, and so all of these terms out here, 
sum to 0, but then at 0, I have a 1. And so u of 0 is 1, because I've got all of these terms with sum to 0, and then this term here. Then, uh, as an example, when n is greater than 0, so let's say n is equal to 2, so now I'm going to sum all of these terms up, and this guy here. So I'm summing a whole bunch of 0 terms up, which is 0, but because uh, n is greater than 0, my summation includes this guy here, so I have u of 2 is equal to 1. So again, um, this particular case is not all that helpful, but it's an example of the sort of thing that we'll do later, where we are given a discrete time function, and we are summing from the beginning, well, before the beginning of time, uh, so our lower limit of the sum is minus infinity, up to a particular value. So uh, again, the goal here was to introduce the unit step function and the uh, delta function for discrete time signals, and hopefully you found this useful.